Good evening, and welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study with me, your host, Minister Mark Walters. I'm coming to you live from the Ebenezer Church of God right here in lovely Landover Hills, Maryland, where the pastor is the Bishop Oliver Sabrian um, and his lovely wife, the lovely effervescent First Lady Rose Sabrian. I um, also want to give a shout out to our first daughter, um, Sharona Sabrian. I want to give a shout out to my family, um, wife, Vanessa, children, Emmanuel, Jeremiah, and Angelina. I want to give a shout out to all of you who are watching by, by way of YouTube, Facebook, um, however you're watching it, Zoom, however you're watching it tonight. I just want to give a shout out to all of you, all of my friends from, um, from Maryland, my friends from DC, my friends from across the pond, um, over in England, my friends in, in, um, guy in South America and all those places, my friends in New York, all over. Just welcome, welcome, welcome to another uh, Wednesday night Bible study uh, with me, your host and facilitator minister, Mark Walters. I want to give a shout out to my lovely um, spiritual daughters, um, Siobhan Fraley, where are you? Um, woo, shout out to her. Uh, we're filmed tonight before a live studio audience. We're filmed before a live studio audience tonight. Uh, where's my studio audience? Can I hear some shout outs to my studio audience? I don't hear my applause, studio audience. Studio audience, okay. Well, before I want to say good evening to my spiritual daughter, Siobhan Fraley, um, Princess, uh, Rochelle, Tammy, and my big, big, big daughter, uh, Miss Crystal uh, St. Bernard, right here in Waldorf, Maryland. All right, want to just hop into our Bible study tonight. Tonight, we're still staying in the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 6. Um, and um, again, welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study with me. Um, Minister Mark Walters. We're in Joshua chapter 6. And as we say every week, let's open the book and let's have a look. But before we do that, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Jeremiah, cue me up with the prayer music. All right. Father, we bless your name. We lift up your holy name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory tonight, Lord God. We thank you, O God, for this opportunity, for this time, O God, that we're here to share this time, O God, that we are um, I'm here to just um, talk about your words, Lord God. We ask your God, even tonight, Lord God, that your spirit uh, of God, that's, that the spirit of God would just go forth tonight across this broadcast. We're thanking you, God, tonight for the lives that will be touched, the lives that will be edified. And you, God, as you told us, so God, to study, to show ourselves, to prove unto God a workman that needed to not be ashamed of his tools, rightly dividing the word of truth, oh God. So even now you're asking, you're, 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 unctionizing me, oh God, even now to just teach this word, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that everything would go forth under your anointing, under your power, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Let your uh, word go forth tonight, I ask and I pray, and let it touch those who it needs to touch. Let it edify those who need to be edified, Lord God. Let it strengthen those who need to be strengthened tonight, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, we lift you up and we give you all the thanks and we give you all the praise tonight. Please have your way, I pray. In Jesus' name, as I pray, God, let me decrease, Lord God, and you continue to increase, Lord God, that they would not hear um, from the words and the thoughts of man, but they would hear what thus saith the Lord unto your people tonight. Lord God, please have your way, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, we're going to hop in. Um, as we do each week, we're going right into the word here. Um, tonight, this might be a little bit longer lesson, so get your coffee or... As I like to say, get some orange juice and get you a beef patty and sit down um, in your hot tub if you want to and just um, listen up to the word of God tonight. We're going to go into um, Joshua chapter 6, um, and this is talking about the plan of battle. I, I'm, it's not on the first chart as, I, as it normally is, but this is Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. We're going to talk about the plan of battle. We're going to talk about the siege of Jericho. We're going to talk about instructions for entering Jericho, um, the complete victory and discussion and destruction of Jericho, um, the covenant and the curse. All right, so let's jump in. Joshua 6 verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. 
And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. All right, so we're going to talk tonight about the siege. In this first part, we're talking about the siege of Jericho, um, in, in God gives giving them the instructions. But before we even um, look into this, let's look at what Jericho looked like. So this is just a um, this is just a modern day cross section of the Jericho wall. Uh, it was uh, the this was, I'm just gonna sh I'm showing you this to show you the type of structure that they were faced with. So um, what they were faced with was that there was an earthen rampart here. So this was the earthen rampart part. So this is, if you can imagine the wall being sort of like chopped and you kind of separate it out. This is what we're seeing. So this is a cross section of the wall. So if you take, if you just took out a chunk of the wall, this is what you would see. So you would see a uh, earthen rampart with a, with a stone retaining wall at the base. So there's a, a retaining wall here of stone that was at the bottom and you can see it in, in, um, regards here to the size of the men so the stone wall was about 12 to 15 feet high so from here down here um, to up here was about 15 um, feet tall and um, on top of that now was a mud brick wall and this mud brick wall the base of it was about six feet wide and then the top uh, from the bottom to the top was was 20 to 25 um, 26 feet tall so from here now it's it's from the bottom of here up to here so you got 12 feet from here and then and you know you've got this stone rampart that comes down here and it's blocked up against this um th this this the stone um retaining wall here and then you have on top of that so this wall is 12 to 15 feet tall and on top of that um you offset uh, just a little bit you have the um the other mud brick wall here which is about 20 to 20 feet high so that's just that one part and you know as we talked about um rahab the harlot she dwelled somewhere inside of here on the city walls so when you talk about she was in, in the city walls it was sort of like in this area of it and then behind that now you have an, at the crest or the top of the rampart was another wall whose base was about 46 so from here to here so from the ground to the bottom of this um uh, this wall on the top was about 46 feet above the ground so this was why they were not too worried about um the armies of um josh uh, joshua coming in because this wall system was set up here um so that it was pretty much impenetrable it's like you couldn't get up you'd have to have um some kind of tools to scale this wall and if you scale this wall their troops would no less no no um in, in no regard be sitting right here on this top of this wall and they would like literally just make mincemeat out of you inside of this um area right here so the walls were pretty the the, the walls really protected um this whole city of jericho and so if you look at this wall the bible doesn't really say how big the city was nor um could I find a whole lot of information on how of uh, the circumference of the city? Um, so if it was five miles, 10 miles, 15 miles and circumference, we, 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 we don't know that information. But needless to say, you know, it's a pretty um, decent sized city. So this wall went around the entire perimeter of the city. And so you had to, you know, if you were Joshua and you came up against this, um, and and um, the, the children of Israel did not have um, the machinery that would be later invented by the Romans and things to scale these kind of walls, fly, jump up on top, have ramparts go over. And then, you know, you have to, a lot of men would be sacrificing here while you were trying to um, get to the second wall. So it was built as a great military um, fortress here to keep um, people from invading um, this, um, uh, this city. So that's, this is what Joshua was faced with. And um, so he now, so what happens is now if we go in here, so God now gives him a plan of battle because um, God don't fight by the same rules. <laughs> so the inhabitants were preparing for an attack by the advancing 
Israelite army. So the the um the, the, the Canaanites gave the instruction to him, hey, um, shut up the city. No one can go in, no one can go out. And the reason why they gave that instruction was no doubt that they had spies also, and their spies were were, were spying on the Israelites who were camped out by, we talked about it last week at Gilgal, that they were no doubt they were spying on them as they were um, preparing for battle and whatever they, they thought they were doing. They were saying, well, these people, they crossed over the, um, the Jordan River. You remember that? That God miraculously opened up in part of the Jordan River and they came across. So that great miracle was something that was on their minds because as we read last week that the bible says that the hearts of the people in, in jericho melted before them so they're like if i'm setting up this battle so you got the the people um, in jericho the canaanites they're inside of the inside of the, the city um they built this it, this basically fortress a, a wall system around the entire city and now they're sort of like locked up inside and they've got men of war they've got men of valor men of valor but they're now afraid now because they've never seen anything like this. They had the natural element of um, the Jordan River in front of them as a barrier, probably on the east side, I believe. And so that side of it was where um, the Israel army was, was advancing westward. And so that, that system of um, uh, that natural barrier was there. And they, they thought, okay, that's fine. We got the Jordan River. And it was at a time um, when the Jordan River overflowed its banks. So the Jordan River now it's pretty high and and so they have that but the god miraculously opened up the jordan river and then the people of um uh, of the israel the israelites army were now able the people of god were able to march through on the jordan river and so now they encamp right outside of the city a little ways from the city so the people of jericho now would have sent spies um to go and see what in the world is going on with this massive amount of people that is now arriving up on our shores um, but needless to say, they've got their their embankments um, built up by their walls and they've got their big gates and everything is shut up and the people are inside. But one little thing is going on. They're terrified. <laughs> they are terrified, but they're shut up inside. So they were preparing for an attack by the advancing Israelite army. Um, God gives to Joshua two predictions. He says, one, I've given you the city. And number two, when the priests blow with the horns and and the people shout when the people blow so there's two things going on here the people uh, the priests are going to blow with the horns and the people the people in the army only are going to shout and, and we're not going to do this all of this we're not going to do it all the whole time but there's a specific time when the people are going to shout and we're going to see the specific instructions that god has given to them so what's coming the the, the priests are going to be blowing with the horns they're going to be right in front of it and then what's going to come next is that the people are going to shout and this is this is a, a pictorial um, um of the people inside of jericho this is as we see here um everybody <laughs> not sure who this is um but <laughs> they're inside of jericho and they're terrified they're scared um the men and the and the people of barrel they have the the doors all bolted up and the the the, so, the, the soldiers are there with their spears and everything but they're terrified because um, they seen what God has done to the Jordan River and, um, and remember God opened up the river it wasn't it didn't open it up for five minutes it was there for hours and probably the space of all day so everybody all the spies would have seen this they would have seen um, there's something going on here at the Jordan the Jordan is like wide open and then people are marching through who is this God? Who is this entity? Who are these people that are able to walk through, uh, that have a, a river just open up? But mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. When God wants to do something, when God God had promised them, uh, you know, this is really, they're going back to the land of Abraham that was originally promised to Abraham. And, and so that actually Abraham originally dwelt there. And so now they're going back to the land of promise that God now promises their people who were now, you know, captives in the land of Egypt. And we know that whole um, long story. And, you know, go back in the book of Exodus, you can see all that. So now they're coming through, they've come through um, the wilderness and they come. So now they're getting ready to enter into the promised land. And God now has to miraculously um, prepare the way or open the way for them. Because if God doesn't do this, they have no way to get into um, into uh, Jericho to, to claim this territory. So this is just a pictogram of all the... The inhabitants there, they're nervous, they're, they're trembling, um, and you can see the mighty men of, of valor there. How's my studio, how's my studio audience doing? Ooh, 
Okay, so we're there. And we are we are now there. So now let's go on. So now God gives them the plan of battle. There are five commands to Israel. There's five commands, five commands. Everybody say five commands. You will come past the city. That means go around the city with the men of war once each day for six days. So six days, you're going to march around the city one time. Six days, you're going to march around one time. Um, and then the seven priests are going to have seven ram's horns, and they're going to go before the ark. Now, we know the ark of the covenant, which followed Israel. That represented the, the presence and the power of God. And so they, they're carrying the ark of the covenant around. So the covenant is, is the, the commands that Moses had received from God, the tablets of stone. They're inside the ark. They've been carried um, there. Um, and so they are marching around the city now they're going to march around the city with them for six days so that if you can picture this so you have the men of war we'll sit in a second here um so the seven priests with the seven horns are going to go before the ark each day around the city on the seventh day you're going to march around the city seven times so look at that once once each time around the city once each day you're going to go around the city one time and you're going to go around the city one time every day six times six six days six times then on the seventh day you're going to march around the city seven times and then what's going to happen at the end of the seventh time which is on the seventh day the priests are going to blow a long blast on the ram's horn and the people are going to shout with a great shout so at the end of the seven times, the priest shall blow a long blast of the ram's horn and the people shall shout with a great shout. Can I hear my studio audience shout, shout? <laughs> On the seventh day, they're going to shout with a great shout. They're going to be a little bit louder than the studio audience, but you get the idea. So then once the, once the, the shout has gone forth, then the walls are going to go um, flat and then everybody's going to take the city now this is a tremendous um miracle because you, you, you remember i just showed you how the walls were set up in the city this is a this is not a simple thing here this is a whole huge system of walls and god is going to topple these walls and take them down miraculously so that israel does not have to lose so there are seven things go there's seven set there's sevens going on here there were seven priests there were seven ram's horns the city was to be compassed for seven days on the seventh day the city was to be compassed seven times so there were seven priests so just take note of the seven there's seven priests there's seven ram's horns trumpets so these are trumpets that made out of ram's horns and the city was going to be compassed seven for seven days and on the seventh day the city was going to be compassed seven times okay all right that's seven is is god's um, number of completion representation um perfection whatever you want to call it but that that means that this thing was going to be completely um done so on the seventh day um, when they're being obedient to god that on the seventh um iteration of their march around the city um that's when the the completion of the of the destruction of jericho was going to now be um uh, be, be be upheld so oh and remember only maybe not remember but there's only a portion of the armed men were to go around the city that's a key note here when i was in sunday school we used to sing around the walls of jericho around the walls of jericho around the walls of jericho the army went so i didn't pay attention to that part too much the part of it was the army so the army went so it's not all the people because you got millions of people millions of people cannot um uh, traverse the city in one day so this is just the army the the, the men and this is, a, this is probably a smaller portion of the army um is there so they're this portion of the army is traversing and um so they're in front the priests are in, so they're in the middle and then there's what they call the rear reward or the rear guard which is behind them so you got the the, the main uh, warriors fighters you got the priests in the middle and then you got another set of fighters behind them all right so and it came to pass when joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the lord followed them and the armed men went before the priests that exactly like i was saying before the armed men went before the priest that blew the trumpets and the rear reward or the rear guard came after the ark when i was young i used to wonder dad what is rear reward um so and that was explained that's there's just a rare guard it's another set of uh, people and troops behind them they came after the ark the priest went on and they blew with the trumpets and joshua had commanded the people 
thing. You will not shout. You will not make a noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then you shall shout. And, and what Joshua is saying is that God has already got a plan um, in motion is set up and this is the plan the plan is you're gonna hold your peace you're not gonna say anything and but then there comes a time when you're going to have to make a noise and that that just um uh, lets me understand that there's sometimes when when god is just instructing you just to be quiet just you know when god is going to deliver you out of something uh, sometimes you ruin the plan by by you opening up your mouth sometimes you just got to be quiet and when now when god has given you the instructions and when it's time to speak um then you then and only then will you speak because remember as 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 god said to moses that this battle you you don't even have to fight in this battle this um, uh, uh, not, not even to Moses, but to Jehoshaphat, that this, you don't even have to fight in this battle, that, that God himself is going to um, fight uh, for you in this battle. You don't even have to do that, just hold your peace. So they're going to hold their peace for a little bit, and then um, afterwards, God is going to now open up the way, and God is going to allow them to speak, and they're going to shout, and they're going to scream, and whatever they're going to do, and the walls are going to come tumbling down flat. Um, if you can, uh, if I think I have the notes in here and, and we'll talk about that in a second. What's going on with the people inside? So the ark of the Lord compassed the city going about it once and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. So they marched through it once. Um, and Joshua rose early in the morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. Let's go through this. And the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of rams, rams horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew the trumpets and the armed men went before them. But the rare reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they come past the city once and return into the camp. So they did six days. Um, so what's going on here? So every day they're, they're they assemble this um the assembly. They've got the, the, the warriors in front, the priests um in the middle, and another set of warriors behind. And they go and they march around the city one time. Now, what do you think is going on inside with the people inside? Um the people inside must be thinking, what in in the potato is going on here um, with these people. They are just walking around the city. What is that supposed to do? And imagine that they must be inside thinking, oh my God, they have no chance of, um, uh, of defeating us. And, and they probably at this point now felt safe. Like after day one, they would have thought something would have happened. If anything was gonna happen, it would have happened on day one or maybe day two. So day one came, everybody's quiet it's just the priests which are blowing um with the horns that's all the priests are doing that's a little different from the sunday school story because the sunday school story nobody's blowing anything at any time everybody's silent but that's not really the scripture the scripture says that the priests the priests were blowing and what that what that's saying is that there is coming now the, the priests are, are just sounding that's symbolic of the coming um victory or the coming um triumph of the lord so the the horns re represent um that that there is now going to come forth the very presence of God. So what's what's going? They're just they're just preparing the way. They're just blowing the blowing the horn. So when we're playing the horns in the in the church and we're playing the music in church, what we're really saying is that God just send your glory, send your power, send your anointing, send your presence into this place. So music and, and horns and, and the making uh, of, of melody is is something that while it itself doesn't draw the presence of God, it's really symbolic of you know the we, we believe, God, that your presence is here and we're now going to be um, playing the music, sending out the sending out the, the sound, sending out the alarm that the very presence of God is coming into this place, is coming into this room even at this time. Amen. Uh, can I hear something from my studio audience? Amen. 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 So the second day, they can pass the city, the same thing. They can pass the city um, one time and then they return into the camp. So they did this for six days. But what's going on inside now is the people in the people in the inside of Jericho. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and they come past the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day, they come past the city seven times. So on the seventh day, they um, they come past in the city seven times. So now the people in Jericho must be like, whoa, something different is here. Um, the seventh day, 
they're just marching around. Uh, they march it uh, for day one. They march once. Day two, they march once. Day three, they march once. Day four, they march once. Day five, they march once. Day six, they march once. Day seven, now they marched around seven times. So inside, I can imagine what they're thinking in Jericho. Uh, whatever it is they're trying to do, it's not working. So now they're just going to march around seven times and see if anything's going to happen. Um, so they're probably thinking, okay, I think we're okay. We think we're good. Um, but that's not really what was going on. Joshua was just being obedient to what God has, has told him to do. So the ark and the priest went between two, as I mentioned before, the ark and the priest went between two parts of the army. Um, Joshua was probably in the first part in the front portion of the army. Um, there was a rare guard or rare re-reward re which followed the priest. And the priest blew the trumpets in all the marches. That's what verses 5 and 13 of chapter 6 says. So the priests are blowing the trumpets in, in a part of all of the marches. So when a long blast of the trumpet was made, that was the seventh time on the seventh day, on the seventh march, the people, the army was to shout. And this was to happen on the seventh day, on the seventh traversal. Um, so Joshua had been about 80 years um, at least minimum, um, must have accompanied the army for the entire, so they marched around the city 13 times around the city. And God was given, um, is going to give them the victory on the 13th march around the city. So all of you that are, were, that are scared of Friday the 13th, see 13th is also a number of God giving you a uh, victory. So it's not something to be scared of all of you that have triskaidekaphobia. Um, really it's 13 also signifies the, 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 the triumph of the Lord in, in being obedient, obedient to the commands and the dictates of God. So on the 13th time around is when God took down, um, the city. And this is a little, again, this is my little cartoon. Um, thank, thank the people across the pond there who did uh, these wonderful cartoons. Um, so there is, um, across the pond being, you know, in England, Britain. Um, so this is, um, these are, again, these are the, the, the warriors in the front um, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of, of the procession. Then you have the seven priests with the seven ram's horns. I think there's seven here if you count them up. So there's seven ram's horns. And then you have the Ark of the Covenant right here. And then behind them is the re-reward or the other rest of the the fighting men so they're here behind them and then these are the walls see this is the wall see you've got oh, this is a beautiful beautiful um um cartoon of it but it's very accurate that there is the and this is the embank this is the um uh the the, the um the the wall the the, the earth and embankment here and then this is the this is the, the stones which which are the retaining walls at the bottom and there's the higher wall and then up on the top here is the second wall so all of this stuff got to come down and here you know this is where the people live so people like rahab the heart lived up on this portion of what we call the wall so this is a good um cartoon of the whole thing so this is sort of how it, it sort of looked this is what they were faced with um, at the time and as you can see it's, this stuff is pretty impenetrable uh, it's not this wall is a lot higher than it is to, to this man's head of course um, but you know you get the idea so that there is a there's a there's a retaining wall here it is on top of that another wall there's um, this gradual slope here and then on top of that now is a whole another set is another wall which is towering above them so this is the whole setup right here uh, and then again warriors in the front um, the priests with the seven ram's horn are blown, are following them behind them. And then you've got the Ark of the Covenant, which represents um, the presence of God. And it's, it's the, the, um, the showbreads in there, the, the, um, the tablets are, are in there, Aaron's rod that but is, is, but it is in there. So all that is in the Ark, they're carrying it. And it represents um, the covenant that God made with, um, with Israel. Um, through Moses, it represents that. It represents the very presence of God, that where this was, um, the presence of God was also there. And actually now it represents us as believers, that wherever we are, the very presence of God is there with us. We are, we carry, we are the ark, that which is being symbolically carried here. There's no need <clears throat> for ark anymore because we, the children of God, 
um, are the ark of the Lord. We carry the very presence, the very spirit of the Holy Spirit is now contained with us. So everywhere we go is the ark, is the presence of God. So that's why you got to be careful where you're going and what you're doing, where you're going. Be careful what you're doing. Be careful where you are as a child of God because you are carrying um, the very presence of God with you. So, you know, you don't need nobody to carry you, um, but God himself, you you are carrying um, the presence of of God with you wherever you go. The Holy Spirit now lives inside of us. So where the Holy Spirit was was symbolically contained in this, in the present, and this represented the very presence of God. That was just this uh, symbol, symbolic or typology of what will be happening um, once um, Jesus Christ now dies and the, the Holy Ghost is poured out, just like we see in John chapter 18, where the Holy Ghost is poured out and, and, and the commands are and, and the um and the, the discussion in, in John 18 is about what the Holy Spirit's going to do when God, when Jesus leaves, he says, expedient that I leave um, so that the other one, the comforter um, uh, will come and the, ho the Holy Spirit is going to dwell with you and be with you, going to be in you and instruct you and guide you. Uh, and it's all that's in John 18. But that's Holy Spirit now um, is what's in here. It's, it's is what's symbolic here and they're carrying the presence of God and all this was a foreshadowing of what was to come later on when the Spirit of God would indeed dwell inside of man and it's not going to just be poured up on men um, sporadically as it was in the, in the days of the Old Testament like upon Elijah upon Elisha and all these kind of things but the Spirit of God was going to dwell inside of man and so to receive that Spirit of God it, all you have to do is ask Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, and then the very spirit and the very presence of God now dwells inside of you. All right, so at some point, if we ever get there, it's a long way off, we're going to talk through um, John chapter 18 and what that actually entails. Um, so again, back to our story now. So we have the four, I mean, not four, but we have, um, the again, um, the troops in the front. The seven priests with the ram's horns, which are blowing, and they're blowing every day. They're blowing their horns. They're, that's the only sound you hear. Nobody else is making a noise. And then, you know, you have the priests carrying also the Ark of the Covenant. And then there's the rear reward or the rear guard, which is following up behind them. And again, um, their challenge now is to how do we defeat um, um, this army? I mean, how do we defeat the army, which is behind here, which are now protected by this whole barrier system here? Of walls all right so and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets Joshua now says unto the people shout for the Lord hath given you the city and it came to pass on the seventh time so this is on the seventh day on the seventh time um, the priest now they began to blow this is now now it's not the regular blown this is our long blown <laughs> They're blowing a really, really, really long um, shout um, or, 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 or blast with the, with the ram's horn trumpet. And Joshua said to the people, shout now. Now is the time um, for you to shout. There's a time to be quiet. There's a time to um, not say anything as to follow the dictates of God. But then there comes a time when you just got to shout now because now victory is at hand. And so now, it's you know, Brother Fergie always says, uh, Brother Ferguson, if you're in our church, Oh, with the great man of God always says, shout, shout, um, shout uh, for God has given shout for victories. What Brother Fergie always says. So now, and it comes right from Joshua 6 and 16, shout for victory, shout because God has given you the city. So God is now giving them the city. He said, you got to shout now. And, the, and when you shout, when you become obedient to um, the word of God, all of the, the, the barriers that are standing before you are going to come down. The things which seem so impenetrable are going to come down. It is a shout and it's a shout of praise. And it's not the shout because if you watch a National Geographic channel or one of these other channels I've watched, um, some people believe that it's, it's because of the shout, the noise and the shouting uh, that these walls were like, you know, on on, on the ground, which is very shifty, and that it's it somehow, and some people have even said in um, that there was an earthquake that happened precisely at that moment. Okay, believe that if you want. And <laughs> some people said that it was because of the shout. Now it causes the ground now, and, and all of the in, the um, imperfections and and what and, and and what the um the rock systems or or the wall system was built on now gave way because of sonic um, vibrations. That doesn't make any sense. 
the entire structure now now begins the entire wall system across the, the board the whole thing now begins to shake and to fall down it, can you imagine this this um power um this god and what god is now doing and can you imagine in your life the things that god can do in your life if this god can cause this this incredible system of walls to come tumbling down how much more so that god can tear down walls in your life and in your home and, and those things that are um, seemingly um, impassable or impenetrable for you. Um, God can bring them down. Um, in, in one scripture, it says in the high places, God is going to bring um, them down. So these were these were places that uh, men built and they thought there's no way anybody's going to be able to, to get in here and do harm to it. There's no way anybody's going to take the city. But when God, when God says this is coming down, it's coming down. There's nothing anybody can do. So what God, but all we are required to do is to be obedient to what God is telling us to do. It's amazing what obedience can do in the life of a believer. Joshua was obedient. And because of Joshua's obedience, then the walls of Jericho, this impregnable, this impenetrable, uh, impenetrable um, wall in this impenetrable city was now going to be conquered. It's because, not because of Joshua, not because of any strategy that he had, not because of the valor of the men, but just because Joshua was obedient to God. Now God shows up. When you're obedient to God, God will show up. And I always like to say, when God shows up, he just go ahead and shows off. And so God now brings the whole city down. The city shall be accursed. But look at what he says, because we're going we're gonna to get to this in Joshua chapter 7. He says, the whole city will be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. Rahab the prostitute, that's the only person in there that's going to live. She and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers um, that we sent. So we know earlier in the... In, in Joshua, when 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 um, when when Joshua sent the two spies, the two spies they hid out, and, and Rahab was able to hide them. And because of that, she she made a bargain with them because she hid them. She made a bargain. She said, "When you come um, to destroy the city, because we know that your God has given us, given you the city, um, then please save my family." And so. Um, so then she made that deal with them and that's what happened and we're going to see um we're going to see what happens with with Rahab later because she's now in the lineage and the genealogy of the um, paternal it's called well we'll, we'll we'll talk to that later well she's now in the genealogy of Christ there later on we see that in Matthew chapter one we're gonna go on and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the cursed things Lest you make yourselves a curse when you take up the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. So what God is saying is you're going to the city is going to be accursed. Um, it's so all everything in there is a curse. So in other words, if it's a curse, don't touch nothing. Don't bring nothing home with you. Um, only person, only thing that's not cursed is Rahab the harlot because she she did something righteous. And so you he says in any wise keep yourselves from anything that is a curse and don't touch it lest you make yourself a curse when you take the curse thing and bring it into the camp of israel then the whole camp is now going to be cursed and we're going to see what happens when that actual scenario does happen um so let's go on but all the silver and all the gold and the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. So we're going to take those out from the city. We're going to make those, consecrate those to the Lord. And they're going to come to be used in the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the walls fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. All right, so this is what's happening here. In again, the people from across the pond gave us these wonderful um, graphics. Um, so we see here <laughs> that they are shouting, and then the walls are coming down. So the walls, which were there, they are just coming straight down. And and when they came down, they were able to just march straight up, ba built based upon all the all the stone and all the mud brick that had fallen down. It formed like a natural 
um let's call it like a, a ramp for them to just walk straight up into the city so that's what they used to destroy the city and plus the people inside the city they were they were terrified now at this point because the, the entire these are the people first of all they're terrified because god um, opened up the jordan river so they they were like oh my god there's there's nothing we can do against this this god and then on top of that now they're covering cur inside the city and god has now opened up um the walls tore down the walls which are protecting the city and is allowing the people um of israel to march and so they've already lost the fight um so israel was able to just go in so they utterly destroyed all that was in the city both man and woman, young and old, and oxen, sheep, and, and donkey with the edge of the sword. And um, jo But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house, that's Rachel, um, Ra Rahab rather, and bring out thence the woman and all that she had as you swore unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And and they brought out all of her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. So they brought them outside. They couldn't go inside the camp of Israel yet because they were the men were uncircumcised. So they were considered unclean. But they were sat outside. So again, a little picture um, here. So this is the two spies leading out um, Rahab and her father and her brethren. And they're bringing them outside um, off the city walls. So, so while the city is burning, they're bringing them outside and they're bringing them into the camp of, uh, of uh, Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. So God had instructed them that the, the gold, the silver, the brass and the, and, um, and of iron, those are going to be used um, to um, to um, for for instruments and ordinances and for making um you know the lava and all those things that need to and, and the brazen altar and all those things that need to be put into the house of the lord all right so then this is um again this is a, a little cartoon of what's going on so the whole city the walls that fell fell down here we see the walls um crumbled down different places and they burnt the city and the city is now in ruins and fire and and joshua is now utterly destroyed all of the um the inhabitants there as god had commanded uh it sounds a little ruthless in our time but remember um that in this time there was it was this this was the time for the at the battle of the gods and what happens um in in this day in this time uh, around 14 uh, 13 1400 bc is that if you're if you conquered a, a nation or you conquered a land and and you did not destroy every inhabitant in the land then what it really said to all the other peoples that were around or the people that you had conquered was that your god was not able to your god was not able to to um utterly your god was not able to completely um um do um give you um conquest so part of it here is the battle of the gods and that and that god now destroys all of this but what god was really doing really is that he did not want his people to be mixed up with any of the accursed things because the um, Canaan, Canaan and the Canaanites were very, very um, um, despicable people in terms of what they were doing with, with, with children and sacrifice and all these kinds of things like that, what they were doing. Um, they were doing abominable things before God and God did not want his people mixed up in these things with all of their spirits and all of the things that were um, all those things, the sacrifices to idols and to demons, uh, demon gods and all those things. God did not want any of that um, to tarnish the uh, to tarnish the relationship that his people had um, with him. So th that's why God commanded, you know, all these things to need to be um, burnt. The whole city needs to be burnt to the ground and don't take anything out of there except what I've commanded. So this was victory and we're coming to the end now. So the victory and the complete destruction of Jerusalem, God topples the impenetrable walls, the instructions followed, and the instructions followed and the victory was gotten. And they were to shout, this is just a recap on the 13th traversal, they destroyed the city, uh, Rahab the harlot was served, was saved, don't take anything for yourself, take, 
except for the gold, silver, brass, and, and the elements which are going to be used um, later on. Um, so from the Canaanite perspective, they, they no doubt, as I talked about before, they looked upon it as a strange method of fighting when they saw people just marching around, that they marched around in relative silence except for the blowing of trumpets. Um, there was no efforts to scale the walls, which would have led to massive casualties suffered by the Israelites. No weapons were used, no machinery, no means of warfare, because God don't need any of that. <laughs> so it, what, as I was putting this together, it just it just showed me that, you know, the, the, the scripture in the New Testament, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, and it really talked, that scripture is talking about something in the spiritual um, sense that, you know, it's mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, even bringing to, into, um, into captivity the thoughts and imaginations of the heart and all the kind of things like that. But there are there are some um, battles there are some things that that god um can do um, because he's god and and there is no limit to what god can do there is no situation that god can't um, um deliver you from there's no there's no trouble there's no trial there's nothing that you've gotten yourself into that god can't get you out of there's nothing that you are uh, gotten out of that god can't get you in so wh whatever the situation is whatever whatever it is it, the simple thing always stays with me. In all your ways, God says, acknowledge him. In other words, bring him into the discussion and he will direct your path. And God will make a way out of no way. And God will destroy some ways when he needs to destroy some ways. And there's some things that God needs to tear down and he'll tear it down. There's some things that God needs to build up and he will build them up. But you just got to know, you just got to know that I have to trust God and I have to believe God and I have to walk in the ways of God in order for God to work these great miraculous things in my life. So there was no machinery, there's no means of warfare used. To be honest, all of it seemed pretty ridiculous. <laughs> so I was putting it together, I was like, that seems pretty ridiculous. <laughs> that the way God, I mean, who saw this coming? I mean, seriously, if you were a military general and you were strategizing on how to invade Jericho, I promise you, I promise you that all the greatest generals um, General Schwarzkopf, even of this era and this time, no one would have said, huh, march around the city. Let's, let's, let's get the whole army and let's just get the priests together and the worshipers. I just, let's just march around the city because, uh, yeah, that'll, that'll win the victory. Nobody is doing that. <laughs> but the God had using the, God had used the, the, the simple things to confuse the wise and the prudent. God uses whatever means he chooses to fight for us when he chooses to fight for us. Um, the fortifications of the enemy are no match for the believer whose trust is solely in God. So let me say it again. The, no matter what the enemy is doing, how fortified he is, how strong he is, how powerful he is, one believer who trusts in God can destroy the entire army of the enemy. God delivers in his time using whatever he chooses to execute your deliverance. God delivers again in his time um, using whatsoever he chooses to execute to execute your deliverance. 1 Corinthians 1 18 31 says that God takes the foolish things to confound the wise and the weak things to destroy the mighty. God takes the foolish things um, to confound the wise and he uses weak things to destroy the mighty. Because when you're on the Lord's side, there is no stopping you. Amen. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot alive, and her father's household, all that she had. And she dwells in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua jured them at the time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in the youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So there's a covenant and there's a curse. So there's a covenant with Rachel and there's a curse for Jericho. So Rachel and her family were secured as the promise, as promised by the, uh, the promise and the covenant that she made with the two spies. They were kept outside of the camp until the males were circumcised. So that once they were circumcised, then that, you know, the uncleanness, what they were, that was, that which was unclean is now clean. They allowed to come inside the camp. They later move into the camp and they live with the Israelites. Um, Rachel marries. Now, this is what happens. Not Rachel, Rahab. Oh, that's a mistake there. Rahab. Um, so the covenant with Rahab, sorry. I, for some reason, when I start typing Ray, 
I start typing Rachel, not Rachel, Rahab and the curse. Uh, Rachel is a totally different person. Um, so Rahab and the curse of Jericho. Uh, my proofreader should have caught that, but except I'm the proofreader. <laughs> so I didn't catch that. So Rahab and her family are secured as promised earlier by the two spies. So Rahab now uh, married Solomon who begat Boaz who marries Ruth. Remember the story. This is in Matthew 1. We know this, but you know, of course, the story of Ruth is in the book of Ruth. Um, but Rahab marries Solomon, who begets Boaz, who marries Ruth. And then from that lineage, you get David and Solomon are in this lineage. And that goes all the way down. Um, the lineage is the earthly paternal lineage of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born the Christ. So we know um, that Joseph wasn't Christ's father, but he was married to Mary. This is how I like to portray it. So um, he's the husband of Mary. And from Mary, we know, was born the Christ by the Holy Spirit. So um, Rahab, oh, it's a, um, I, you, can, you can go ahead and crucify me in, in YouTube um, in the comments section because all this should be Rahab. So Rahab marries Solomon who begets Boaz and he marries Ruth. And then all this, these are all David, Solomon, they're all in this lineage. And so this is the paternal lineage of Joseph, the husband of Mary, from whom was born Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So let me get off that page with all those errors. Um, so the covenant and the curse. So Joshua imposed upon his people a solemn oath binding on them and their posterity that Jericho should never be rebuilt. This was no doubt due to the idolatry, immorality, and vice that was contained within the city walls. And whoever built, rebuilds Jericho shall lose his firstborn when the foundation is laid, and they're going to lose the younger son when he sets up the gate. Now, you would think with that instruction and that warning that nobody would do this, but guess what? 600 years later, um, let's read what the Bible says. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In the days of Heel of Beth Bethel, in the days of Hiel, rather, of Bethel, um, built Jericho. He laid its foundation at the cost of Abiram, so his firstborn was gone, and he set up the gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segub. So, so he lost Abiram and Segub, both of his kids, according to what um, Joshua had said uh, 600 years earlier, um, that if you build it, you're going to lose your firstborn, uh, you're going to lose your, your firstborn, which your oldest son and your youngest son. So that's what happened to Segu. All right. So we're concluding this with the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country. So righteousness exalts, and, but sin is a reproach to any people. So because of Joshua's righteousness, God exalted him. So Lord, the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was noised throughout all of the country. So everywhere. Um, people were talking about Joshua. So if the Lord is with you, people will talk about you. Um, and so um, what I, I want to leave with, with you this offering is that stay on the Lord's side. And whatever you need from God, God will do. Whatever obstacles you need to be torn down in your life, God will tear them down. Whatever battles you need fought in your life, God will fight them. The battle is not yours. Uh, it is the Lord's. So I'd like this to, to just leave that to you as an, as an offering tonight. This is what Joshua um, chapter 6 is really telling us. Um, that, you know, this battle is not yours. That you have got to just wait for instructions from God. And once God gives you instructions, then it's up to us to um, be obedient to God and to carry out the instructions of God. And when you listen to God and when you're obedient to God, God will fight for you and the walls and those things in your life that are hindering your access and are messing you up and are messing with you, God will bring them down. I'd like to offer salvation to you tonight. If you don't know Jesus Christ, um, you know, it's okay to say tonight I don't know Jesus Christ, but it's not okay to, to, to leave the broadcast and not get to know him. Um, so we're all sinners by nature for the Bible says Romans 3 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God showed his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were enemies with God, God still loved us and God still cared for us. And God still um, want us to come to him. Um, so God showed his love or demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, God 
Christ came and he died for, for you, for me as a sinner, we receive eternal life. It's a gift. It's a gift of God. Now, sin, um, when sin pays you, the payment is death. So when you're done with the payment, when you're done with all the sinning in your life, uh, guess what? Your payment is death. You die. You die both physically and you die forevermore. Um, and there, then the reason we talk about salvation when you're being saved, being saved means you're saved from something. So we're saved from destruction that is to come. We're saved from hell itself. And so uh, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And once you believe in Jesus Christ, once you accept him, accept him as your savior, you will never die. You are passed from death to life. And your, and your ledger is wiped clean, and now you are um, in the kingdom of God from this day forward. All right, so we've got to learn that we've got to trust, we've got to surrender to Jesus Christ as Lord. And this is the, this is the prayer of salvation here, that what God says in his word, that if you will confess, confess what? Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe in your heart, that God had raised them from the dead, then you will be saved. For with the heart, you, man believes to righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So what does that mean? That means what I just, what I say um, this prayer tonight, and I believe it in my heart, that the Holy Spirit is going to just come and live inside of me, just like we saw um, earlier on when they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, and that represented the, the, the Spirit and the presence of God. What is going to happen tonight is that there's a great transformation. There's a great substitution going on. There's a transformation in that um, a um, that God is now going to come in and transform or change your heart, change your life from the inside out. And there's a great substitution that God is now, that Jesus Christ is going has taken your place because you should have died on the cross, but now he has died on the cross um, in place of you. Um, so it's a great substitution. So I want to just pray a prayer with you. I want you to say the prayer with me. If you are home um, tonight, I just want you to say this prayer. Say, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know my sin deserves to be punished. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who lived and who died for me and he rose from the grave on the third day. I now turn from my sin and trust Jesus Christ alone as my Savior. By your word, which I have heard and read tonight, I thank you for the forgiveness and the everlasting life I can now have through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer um, tonight, then God has, has entered into your heart. Then the Spirit of God is now living inside of you. Your life will never be the same. Um, and you, you're going to be brand new. You're changed. If you have a moment, if you have a chance, then drop a line in our chat um, and tell us what God is doing in your life. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Um, and again, we have the assurance of salvation through Jesus Christ. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's at this time now, I'd like to just close this out by, by asking you to, um, if you like the broadcast and you like, um, not even so much if you like the broadcast, even if you don't like the broadcast, you like to support um, the work of the ministry. Um, it's this is a great church to support. It's a great church to um, to to give offerings to. So um, the work of the ministry goes long and far. We reach so many different people in so many different continents. I don't have time. Uh, maybe in, in a couple of weeks I'll put down a, a list of some of uh, the ministries and some of the places, some of the the the, the, the towns, the cities, the villages, the countries the continents that we have reached um just this 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 church right here in landover hills maryland this is a great this is great ground this is good ground to sow seed uh, mark chapter 4 talks about sowing seed in good ground i promise you if you sow seed in this ground you will receive um some 60 some, some 30 some 60 some 100 fold you will see a hundred fold increase on what you have sown um god bless you as i said every week. Um, I love you, but God loves you even more. Have a great evening. God bless you.